Now in this question on sequences, we've got a sequence of terms x1, x2, x3 and so on. And it's defined as the first term x1 equaling 1. And we've got this recurrence relationship here where we have xn plus 1 equals a times xn plus 5 where n is greater than or equal to 1. And a is a constant. And in the first part, we've got to write down an expression for the second term, x2, in terms of a. And to do that, part a there, all I need to do is say when n equals 1. Because when n equals 1, if we substitute it in here, we get x1 add 1. In other words, we get the second term in the sequence, x2, is equal to a times x1 ax1 plus the 5. And we know that x1 is 1. So we therefore have that x2 equals a times 1 plus 5. In other words, x2 is equal to a plus 5. So we have that in terms of a. Now for part b, We've got to show that the third term in the sequence, x3, is equal to a squared plus 5a plus 5. So to get x3, all I've got to look at is when n equals 2. Substitute it into here, and I get x2 add 1, x3, in other words. x3 is equal to a times xn. n is 2, so that's a times x2, and then plus the 5. But I know what x2 is, it's a plus 5. So therefore I've got x3 equals a multiplied by a plus 5. And then I've got this plus 5 on the end. And if I expand the bracket, I've got a times a, which is a squared, a times 5, which is plus 5a, and then plus the 5 on the end there. Okay, so that's what we had to show. Now when it comes on to the third part of the question, part C, what have we got to do here? Well, we're given that x3 is 41 and we've got to find the possible values of a. So let's just say when x3 equals 41. Well, that means I've got a squared plus 5a plus 5 must equal 41. So let's just put therefore a squared plus 5a plus 5 must equal 41. So I've got a quadratic equation in a here, so I need to subtract 41 from both sides. So therefore I've got a squared plus 5a, and then 5 minus the 41 gives me minus 36. So we put minus 36 there, and that will equal 0. Now we could solve this either by using the quadratic formula or we could factorize it. And I can see that this factorizes a couple of brackets. It's going to be an a in the front of each one. And then it's going to be minus 9. No, it's not. It's going to be plus 9, I should say. Plus 9 and a minus 4. 9 times minus 4 is minus 36. And I can see I'm going to get 9a minus 4a, which is 5a. So that means that therefore a plus 9 must equal 0. Each of these factors must equal 0 or a minus 4 must equal 0. And if I subtract 9 from both sides, I therefore have a equals minus 9. Or if I add 4 to both sides here, a must equal 4. We're told that a is a constant. Uh, it says that find the possible values of a, so I expect more than one. And so there we go, a is minus 9 or a is 4.